Never mind. Okay, thank you. So, um, yeah. Um, well, if we decide to perform surgery in the elderly patients, yeah, the, the problems may start, you know, so because uh, fixation is an issue. And so the question is what will work. So I would like to talk about the risk factors for implant failure in osteoporotic uh, bone. I would like to talk about a little bit how to adequate fixate uh, the implants and uh, to avoid cement leakage uh, in these patients when you augment the screws. Okay, so we know that there's a high prevalence in women over 50 and it's relatively low in men over 50. However, and, uh, we, sh we advise to measure the bone mineral density in patients over 50 years, at least in the women, and in men over 65 years, if they come to use, they come to casualties, if they have a fracture, if they have an issue, because this may help you to decide what to do. So, um, well, if you are not, well, the easy, most easy thing is to have a, um, a DEXA scan. However, in a daily practice, mostly CT scan are available. Uh, now the question is whether the Hounsfield units are of any help. And we can say yes, because there's a significant correlation between Hounsfield units and T-score. And that means every, everything below 130 roughly of the Hounsfield units means that there's at least a little bit of starting osteopenia. Everything below 100 is definitely starts to become osteopenic or even osteoporosis. Um, not even this, it's even more that when you put in screws and you look where the, um, you, you um, correlate the uh, Hounsfield units with the uh, screw loosening, you will see that definitely if the um, Hounsfield units are somewhat below 120, 115, uh, there's you, uh, the high risk of uh, loosening screws. So uh, Hounsfield units correlate with age and they uh, help you to indicate when to perform a screw augmentation. And therefore we would say, or we would advise that you should consider screw augmentation or as an alternative, a long construct, uh, if the Hounsfield units are below 130, that means the T-score is somewhere between minus 2.5 and minus 1. We would definitely advise you to perform screw augmentation or use a long construct um, if the Hounsfield units are below 100. So, um, because this may help you to avoid uh, screw loosening. So, that's the first kind of take-home message if you perform Furthermore, not look, don't look only on the uh, T-score, but look at the patients themselves, because high age, as I told you in the other talk, uh, a higher, um, a more comorbidities like a higher frailty or frailty, sarcopenia, as we just heard, all these are risk factors for screws loosening and for worse clinical outcome. Smokers, uh, very thin patients, gait disturbances of any reason, and alcohol abuse. So, it makes sense to have a closer look to the patients because then we can see first who of which of the patient has a high risk of a fail for of a failure for conservative treatment. And second, if we perform surgery, when what shall we do? Should we augment screws? Should we go for long constructs, etc.? So it makes sense to look on all the MD information uh, given by the patients. If you have time, and especially if there's not a kind of emergency situation, but there's a patient maybe coming in with a post-traumatic hyphosis or whatever, and you consider surgery in an osteoporotic patient, then you should uh, think about pre-operative uh, medical treatment. Teriparatide is definitely one where we have the most data. And it's uh, if you start at least one month prior to surgery, it may increase the insertional torque of your pedicle screws. And if uh, it if you uh, give the teriparatide even postoperatively on, it may um, help you to lower the risk of pedicle screws loosening. Um, homozotumab is probably similar, but we don't have data so far. So typically we start with teriparatide in these patients if they have severe osteoporosis and we perform surgery, especially if we perform any kind of um, uh, correction. Um, sagittal alignment is, is important too, because we know that patients with uh, vertebral compression, also osteoporotic vertebral compression fractures, typically have or show worse global sagittal alignment and this leads to a decreased quality of life. So the it makes sense to have the 
standing x-rays, to perform standing x-rays whenever it's possible, to see do they have already a disbalanced sagittal spine or even sometimes in the coronal, but mostly sagittally. And, and this correlates with a low quality of life as well as further fractures. So if you think about treating them, you probably have to consider to um, uh, address the decompensated sagittal balance. Here's an example. You can see that the um, the uh, plumb line is relatively far advanced, so it's actually disbalanced because of the fractures. And here, this was the uh, the the answer. I would say our answer to correct this patient and to restore sagittal alignment. Now the question is whether PMMA augmentation of pedicle screws is necessary and meaningful. Here's an example of a 74-year-old low T-score, minus less than minus 0.3. I told you that this is the threshold. Everything below minus three should keep you alert. You know, he, she has a over four fracture, so both end plates are affected at T12. And he was she uh, got a percutaneous screw stabilization with eight screws, but here 10 days already after the surgery, you can see this cutting out of the screws. We know that the augmentation of pedicle screws with PMMA or similar bone cements is meaningful and may increase the failure load up to 250%. So definitely, yes, that makes sense. Uh, but how? Um, first of all, we would say when you have a very low T, a low T score, less than minus 2.5, if the Hounsfield units are below 100, as I told you before, we would advise to cement the screws. Uh, if you if you realize a poor screw anchorage intraoperatively, we see, well, there's not that a lot of torque here. And when I put in the screws, considers uh, augmentation in revisions, of course, in corrections, you know, if you have post-traumatic kyphosis and in, if in percutaneous stabilizations, because percutaneously you don't have any uh, feedback if you put in the screws. I personally think you don't, cannot really feel how good the bone is. Um, so here was this was the answer. So this when uh, we revised the patient, and in that case, we performed an anterior posterior surgery. The majority of our patients, however, get just a percutaneous posterior stabilization. But the cases I show you now are mainly revisions. So here we perform posterior anterior with screw augmentation. However, there are some limitations. Cement exorization, if you uh, augment screws, is often occurs here in, in this study up to 73%. And even although they are asymptomatic, even pulmonary cement, cement embolism occur in up to 4% if you really perform CT scans of the thorax afterwards. In a, a, a meta-analysis, they found a symptomatic complication rate of even 5.5% in uh, screw augmented augmented. Uh, uh, on screw augmentations and the 30 day mortality of 8, 1.8%. I think that's quite high, uh, I would say, but anyway, that's what literature says. But it, there's a risk if you cement screws that patients, uh, that you harm the patients. In order to avoid this, you should first do not uh, put in more than 1.5 cc per cement per screw. So it doesn't make sense to put in too much. You should not augment more than eight screws or augment only the upper or lowermost screws. So you don't have, like in the picture on the right, you don't have to augment all screws. It's typically, it's probably enough if you augment the uppermost and lowermost screws. So in that case, only four. So we are changing now our behavior. We are only cementing the upper and lowermost one. And the cement should be really doughy, should be sticky, you know, before you before you put it in. Because it's a difference whether you put it in in, 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 in kyphoplasty, where you have a void where you can which you fill, or if you press it through the through the uh, screw into the um, normal osteoporotic bone. Because with this high pressure you typically perform, there's a high chance that it's uh, you, you have a cement leakage. So wait for that the uh, cement is really sticky and that you can really watch with the image intensifier what happens with the cement. And as I said, do not put more than 1.5. Further meta methods to enhance the screw purchase are multi-segmental and long constructs. You know, of course, the longer it gets, the higher, the, the more uh, solid it gets. However, you know, the longer it gets, the more likely you get adjacent segment pathology. So that's the, the, uh, the, the other problem. Here's an example. Um, of a short construct in an OO4 fracture. 
percutaneous uh, screw augmentation with uh, PMMA, so hybrid. However, in the thoracolumbar junction, and in, in, in if you have already a local kyphosis, a short construct may fail. So OF4 is sometimes difficult. So here, 30, 36 degree of local kyphosis. So this is not a good result, of course. And in that case, uh, we performed a revision, in that case with the PSO. So a particular subtraction osteotomy, we shortened the spine. And uh, with this, we could stay rather, rather short. So only with a couple of screws below and above. Shorter construct, however, may work below TL1 and above T10. So because, especially in thoracolumbar junction, you will have a lot of local kyphosis. You, there's a risk factor, but below L2, you may stay, uh, stay short and above T10. There's a chance that you can even achieve good results with short constructs. However, you then should uh, um, augment the screws. Further methods are bicortical screw placement, if possible. However, then you should not definitely cement them because otherwise cement goes out anteriorly. Expandable screws are an option. Here's an example uh, of a post-traumatic kyphosis. I, I uh, performed the PSO and uh, used the, um, the expandable screws. They are fine. They work, um, I would say, as good as uh, the uh, cemented screws. However, you, it's definitely, you cannot, you, you won't, be able to take them out again. So if you have to revise them, it's absolute, I think it's almost impossible to get them back because they the distraction maneuver, you can't, you can't uh, turn it around. So they stay there forever, uh, which is a difference. If you augment screws, you can easily take them out because they have not a lot of resistance against torque moments. But augmented screws are an option. Further methods are multi-rod multi -rod constructs as well as cross-links. And of course, uh, the uh, sagittal, um, if you uh, consider or respect the biomechanical load distribution and uh, realigns the spine. Here's an example, a Parkinson patient with this severe um, uh, um, osteoporotic uh, local kyphosis uh, in the L L2 and L3 area after a fracture. And you can see here on the right side how we uh, realign the spine with anterior and posterior surgery. However, if the construct's notwithstanding, the construct may fail, even if you think you have everything done correctly. Here's an example, rather long constructs, augmented screws, but still, obviously, it failed, more probably because I was still not long enough or did not uh, realign the spine accordingly. But anyway, never surrender, because construct failure may occur if the construct ends in a kyphotic area, if the global sagittal alignment is still decompensated, if you di didn't uh, realign it, or if you performed overcorrection, which can occur, especially it, it happens in the thoracolumbar junction, and sometimes it, it happens, you know, you can't do anything about it. So my advice is, if you perform surgery, stay either short, bisegmental, if possible, or be brave enough to for a long construct. You know, if you do something in between, and if you're... Mm, then we probably may fail. Here's an example, a patient or a fire fracture. Um, she uh, had this, uh, she um, had no trauma, but I think for six months, the pain was going on. And uh, uh, first of all, we performed a sh rather short uh, construct. This was the example, but it failed. And therefore I finally decided to go for a longer construct or going uh, down to, um, in that case, to L4 in order to have uh, sufficient anchorage in the lower in the lumbar spine. And then finally it worked. So in conclusion, um, it makes sense to measure the bone mineral density preoperatively, you know, even with the CT scan and use the Hounsfield units, everything below, use the augmentation. Below 100 uh, Hounsfield units, then use augmentation. You should assess the clinical and radiological risk factors beforehand. You know, PMMA augmentation makes sense, but only a limited number of screws, uppermost, lowermost, and stay short if possible or go long if necessary. And anyway, if you start treating surgery or yeah, if you start with surgery in these patients, expect you have to expect the complications. Anyway, thank you very much again, and I'm looking forward for your questions later on.